What is up my fellow Squarespacers? Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to tackle this two layered header. So you can see there's a solid bar at the top with some contact information and social media icons. And then in the bottom layer of the header, we have the header branding and the navigation. So to get started, uh, I'm here in the Brian template. I'm pretty sure this effect can only be achieved in the Brian template because this template is kind of unique in that it has a header top and a header bottom and we need those two rows to be able to achieve this double layer header effect. So the first thing that we have to do is set up our website a little bit to have all the contents that we need to, to put everything in the areas that we need it to go. So uh, if we hop over to the pages panel the first thing that we have to do is we have to put our contact links into the secondary navigation. So if you remember on our example, we have an email and phone number up here. So we need to add those as links to our secondary navigation because then we're gonna tell the template to put secondary navigation links in the top left header. So the first thing that we have to do is click this little plus on the secondary navigation and then you can add your phone number and email here. So um, I'm just gonna do a little example, doesn't matter what it is. Um, and then to add a link to a phone number, this is actually a click to call. So if people click this link, it'll start dialing on their cell phone. Um, to do that, you can write tell and then colon, add a plus, and then just put in the number with no spaces. So for, in my example, it would be one, two, three, two, three, three, two, three, nine, zero. And save that and that'll add it to the secondary navigation. You can see it appeared over here, but um, that's okay, we're gonna rearrange it for uh, later on. So let's go ahead and add another link for the email, and uh, this'll be chris at example.com, and then in order to add a click to mail, you can write mail to colon, and then put your email address. So when people click on that, it will open a like new compose message in whatever mail provider that person uses. So you can see these are both clickable links uh, and they're appearing in the header right now. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do, remember in our example, there we also had social icons in the top right of the header. Um, and so in order for social icons to appear in the header, you first have to connect social accounts to your website. So to do that, you can go to settings, connected accounts, and you just have to make sure that you have some social accounts connected here, or you won't see the option to put socials in the header. So those are the two steps that we need to do ahead of time, and now we're ready to put things where we want them to go. So. To put things where we want them to go, we can do that through the site styles. So click on design and then site styles, and then you can click on the header, and your header um, edits will appear right here. Okay, so the first edit that we want to do is we want our secondary navigation in the top left. So if I come down here, we can see secondary nav positions top right. We want it to be top left. Okay, and then the other thing that we want to do is hide the cart icon. And we want our logo to be in the bottom left. So if we go to branding position, right now it's top center, we'll flip that to bottom left. And we want the primary nav, right now it's top left, we want the primary nav to be bottom right. So I'm gonna to go to primary nav, bottom right. And we also want our social position to be top right. Okay, so now we have everything starting to get set up. So right now our branding color is white, which obviously doesn't work because we're gonna have it on a white background. So we're gonna flip that to black and I'm gonna click on the primary nav as well. That, that's also white, so I'm gonna to need to flip that to black. Um, okay, so now we can actually see it. 
Okay, so now uh, in our example, the top header is this kind of pink color. So I w I'm going to grab this pink color. Got my handy Chrome extension, eyedropper extension. So I'm going to copy that color and come up to the top header and click on the background color. And I'm going to turn it into, oh no. I, one thing that I always do is I'll like copy a color and then I'll go to paste it and then I'll press control C again and that that is like the most annoying thing to me and I always do that so I gotta copy it again because I always <laughs> copy what I'm actually trying to replace okay so now we got this pink color um, and our secondary navigation and our social icons are black so if you just click on them to change their color, we can flip them over to white. So I'm going to do that now. Right now, our secondary navigation is inheriting our primary navigation styles. But because our primary navigation is black, we can't do that. So just uncheck this checkbox. And it looks like it flipped over to white for us, which is cool. Um, and then one thing that I want to do is I'll bring these up to 14 pixels because they were looking a little bit small. Um, okay, so then the last thing that we have to do here, well, before the last thing, if you click on the social icons, you can actually style them. So if you want them to be a little bit bigger, you can make them bigger. In our example, they were pretty big, so I'm going to scale them up a little bit. Um, and then you can change them to solid. And instead of a circle, I want them just to be rounded squares. Um, and they're still looking a little bit small, so I'm going to crank them up. Okay. And then I'll save that. Okay. So if we come back to our example, you can see that right now our header, the top bar, is way too thick. Like there's not really any spacing between the top and the bottom. Um, so that's what we have to do right now. So if I click on the header, we have the option to adjust the padding. So we want to crank the padding all the way down to zero. We don't want any padding. But then the, also these elements themselves have vertical padding. So you can see it says element spacing vertical 20 pixels. So I'm also going to crank that down all the way. And now, just like in our example, there isn't really any spacing on the top bar between uh, the top of the header and the items themselves. So you can see now, now our example matches the example, the inspiration we'll call it, pretty closely. And obviously, like you can play around with the text size and make it more bold and things like that. Um, but I'm not really going to worry about that stuff too much. So one thing that I do want to do just planning ahead of time, we are going to add icons with CSS to each of these links. So I'm thinking that I probably want more spacing between the links. So if you click on your secondary navigation, you can see there's a link spacing option. So I'm just going to crank that up a little bit, and that way we actually have space between them to fit our icons that we're going to add with CSS. Okay, so I'm going to, that looks good to me. Um, the top bar is pretty much set. Now we just have to tackle styling the bottom bar with custom CSS. So. The reason that we have to add the color to the bottom header with custom CSS is because there's only a color option for the top header. So there's no background color option for the bottom he header because it's it's actually just an overlay. Um, it's not really meant for what we're having it do, but it works. So let's navigate to the custom CSS window. And I'm going to right click on the bottom header and click inspect and this way we can kind of see the code and, and what's going on with the template okay so you see here is our header top gets a class of header top and then within the actual site we have this header header bottom 
and it also has the header overlay class because it's overlaying a banner right now. Um, and if we come down one more, we have this header inner, and we can see that there's padding on the top. If we hover over it, you can see the little green that appears. So that's telling us that there's padding on the top, but not on the bottom. So when we add our background color, it, that wouldn't look very good. Um, it's going to look really off-centered because there's spacing on the top but not on the bottom. So one thing that we were going to want to do is add padding to the bottom. So let's scroll down and we can see the class that the padding top is getting added to. It's getting added to dot header inner bottom. So I'm just going to copy this class. Right click and click copy and then I'm going to paste it in here and we're just going to flip this to padding bottom and nothing visually changed but if I inspect now on that header inner bottom you can see now the spacing is correct on the top and the bottom so the last thing that we have to do really is to add a background color and I'm just gonna add a background color of white so hashtag FFF is sort of the shortcut for that and now you can see we have this double layer effect where um, we have the header being solid on the top and solid on the bottom but that's a funky problem that we're running into okay it looks like that was the wrong class to add the background color to it looks good there but when we expand um, it doesn't look so hot so let's actually see okay it's because this class actually gets a margin on both sides because it has it's it can't go any wider than 1800 pixels and so when it gets wider than 1800 pixels it adds some margin on both sides and background color doesn't affect areas with margin so the correct class to add it to is actually going to be header bottom so this doesn't have a max width on it so it'll always be 100 percent of the screen width so i'm just going to target that class below and we'll just swipe this background color from that class and add it to this class okay so now if i expand um, see what's going on that style isn't being applied which means it's not specific enough okay so dot header bottom dot header overlay already has a background color of transparent and we're trying to override it with a less specific instruction so header bottom dot header overlay already had an instru instruction and we're trying to override it with just header bottom so it's not going to render that style so we could just add an important tag which would override the default styling and the background would be white but I don't really like to just throw around important tags willy-nilly because then you start having important tags override important tags and things can get really out of hand so the way that we can have our styling apply to the site over the default styling is just to match the specificity already there so let's just target the dot header bottom dot header overlay class and our CSS is going to override Squarespace's defaults. And if you want to learn more about how the custom CSS we add interacts with Squarespace and the default styling, then you can sign up for my free custom CSS eCourse because we talk about specificity and how code we add actually is affecting the default code on the website. So shameless little plug there, but I really think it'll help you guys understand some of these concepts. So if you want to adjust the spacing on the bottom bar of the header, uh, all you have to do down here is just set the custom padding in the CSS. So for example, if I wanted more spacing on the top and the bottom, maybe I don't think 20 pixels is, is enough, then I can just change these to 30 pixels and it'll have a little more breathing room on the bottom. So I like how it looks with a little more breathing room. I'm going to leave it like that. Also, just quick pro tip, if you select everything with control A and then hit shift tab, it will align everything properly. So that's a cool quick tip to just clean up your code. 
Okay, so now we have come to the last step. We're gonna add the icons next to our email and phone number in the top header. So the way we're gonna do that is we're going to use uh, before pseudo elements to place images before the links. So first thing that we have to do is hop right inspect the links and hop into the code and we're just gonna check out uh, the CSS. So you can see uh, this secondary nav has a class header nav secondary. So I'm gonna grab that class because we only wanna limit our targeting of our CSS to stuff in this header secondary nav. Um, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do is target that header nav secondary. And the next thing that I wanna do is because we're going to be positioning our icons absolutely to these links, we have to give it a relative container to position absolutely to. What we have to do is hop into the code and we basically, uh, our, our container that we're going to position them relative to is this header nav inner class. So header nav secondary dot header nav inner and I'm gonna open up some curly brackets and we're gonna give it a position of relative. So the next thing that we're gonna do is actually target our links to place the images before. So to target the link, uh, I'm going to target the A class, but I only wanna target this email one, so I'm only gonna target the first child. And uh, I'm going to, again, use the before pseudo element to place the image. So whenever using uh, before or after pseudo elements, you have to give it a content property and in this case, we don't wanna put anything in it, so we leave it blank. Next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna give it a width of 25 pixels and a height of 25 pixels. And I'm going to, again, position it absolutely relative to this container. And um, now I'm going to add in my background image. So I'm gonna write background then URL, open up some parentheses, close it with a semicolon, and then in here, I'm gonna click between the parentheses and click Manage Custom Files. And you can see I already have it uploaded, but um, I'll delete it and upload it again. So we're gonna upload our icon to our custom files, click Open, and then we're just gonna click on the email. And because we clicked between the parentheses before we did that, that's where the link gets loaded to. So now you can see uh, the image is sort of appearing, it just doesn't look very good yet. Um, so one thing that we have to do to make it look better is give it a negative margin left value. So I'm gonna do like 35 pixels uh, and that scoots it over. And the other thing we have to do is make sure that the image is always contained within that little 25 by 25 pixel um, container. So we can make sure that the image is always never getting cut off with the background size property of contain. And so that ensures that the image always stays smaller than its container and doesn't get cut off. Then the last thing that we have to do is give it a top value of five pixels and that'll just scoot it up a little bit. So now we have our icon next to the email, um, but you can see that all of the site content, if I full screen this, everything stops here and the the link is lining up correctly but the icon now kind of looks out of place because it's like scooted over too far. So all we have to do is this container is actually, this um, header nav inner container is actually getting a negative margin calculated to help like scoot everything over to the edge. So all we have to do is set the margin left to zero and it'll actually then align everything to the left of the icon. So I'm gonna give it a margin left of zero pixels and we have to throw an important tag on there because um, otherwise it won't render that style. Okay, so you can see now our email icon looks really good next to our link. 
um, everything's lining up correctly. So the only thing that we have left to do is just to repeat that process for our other icon. And so since we already have all the code written, it makes it really easy. We can just copy this A first child before. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to drop down below that closing curly bracket and I'm going to paste and I'm going to change this first child. I'm going to change it to last child. Since we have two links, it's now targeting our phone number. And all I have to do is replace this URL. So make sure the cursor is between the parentheses. I'm going to click Manage Custom Files, add my phone icon. Then once it's loaded, I'm going to click on it. And now you can see that URL gets loaded. So that is how you add the icons next to the actual links themselves. Um, pretty cool effect that we have here. Just like in our example, we now have this split header. We have email, phone with icons. We have our social media icons up here in the top bar of the header. Then we have our branding top in the bottom left and we have our navigation in the bottom right. So a really cool double layer header effect in Squarespace.